Right now, I have a box here that showed up. Supposedly, this is supposed to be the set. <laughs> it's not a pickup truck. I got my DeLorean. I'm knocking like my tripod over and everything with this box, but this, it's actually the thing. It's actually the car. Let's go ahead and get this guy open and take a look at it. Hey there everyone, Kirk here and welcome back to Beyond the Brick. In today's video, we're cruising through time and style with another set review. This here is set number 10300, Back to the Future DeLorean Time Machine, and it's an absolute beauty. Huge thanks to LEGO for sending this out to give you all an early look. The DeLorean is the latest movie related vehicle from LEGO and it's received a major upgrade since its first appearance 8 years ago with LEGO Kuso, now known as LEGO Ideas. You will be able to purchase this set beginning April 1st at both the LEGO store and LEGO shop at home and no, it's not an April Fool's joke or anything like that, this set is actually happening. With a total of 1,872 pieces, you will be able to build yourself the DeLorean time machine, a case of plutonium, hoverboard, display plaque, and exclusive minifigures of Marty McFly and Doc Brown. This set is also a 3-in-1 type build, so you will be able to make all three versions of the DeLorean from Back to the Future 1, Part 2, and Part 3. Upon opening the box, you're greeted with an array of numbered bags, the instruction manual, and sticker sheets. The cover of the manual features a rear view shot of the DeLorean with some time travel effects for an extra touch. The back of the manual also features a Lego-fied version of the spitting license plate scene from the first film. Moving past that, there's a foreword from co-producer of the film Bob Gale with some images of the real car in action. You'll also find some facts about the car and some words from the designer. Every so often while building, a page in the manual will share a fun fact like how the speedometer on the standard vehicle only went to 85 miles per hour, so the filmmakers created a template that went higher for the close-ups of the speedometer. Or that Mr. Fusion was created from a Krupp's 223 coffee grinder. It's things like this that I feel bring enjoyment to both the fan and builder of the set. The build was very fun and in the same way that I felt when building the Ecto-1. Bags 1 through 10 guide you through the main chunk of the vehicle along with the figures, plutonium case, and hoverboard. Once you complete that part of the model, there's a part in the instructions that lets you choose which style you want to build from the trilogy, something that the original set from Kuso offered as well. As much as I wanted to build the hovering version from part 2, I built the original instead to show first and then others afterward. The detail of the finished model is rather impressive and enough to make Doc Brown say, hey, Scott! A lot of cool techniques are involved in the model to bring it all together. I especially love how smooth the sloped angles are because the original set had some rough shaping all around in its design. Albeit designed for the part 2 version of the DeLorean, I think another great function in this build is the switch designed to convert the car in and out of hover mode. It's such a soothing mechanism so you may find yourself a bit mesmerized by it once you finish building it. The external details are nice and are even more intricate with the rear modifications. When taking a look at the LEGO version in comparison with the real deal, you'll see that it's pretty accurate. You've got yourself flux bands, flux boxes, a tachyon pulse generator, a nuclear reactor, and the reactor cooling vents. In addition to that, there's also the wiring that's connected to the front and back, the out of time license plate, a printed 1x2 G slope with the DMC logo, and printed Technic dish pieces for the tire rims. With a detailed model like this, you'd expect a lot from it and I'm happy to say it does have some more tricks up its sleeve. Both doors raise up to gain access to the interior, but their one flaw is that they don't stay raised due to their weight. So if you're looking to display your DeLorean with the doors open, that may be a bit of a problem. Moving to the hood of the car, you can raise it to store the case of plutonium and hoverboard. The case can also open to reveal the plutonium inside too, which is nice. Going back to the interior, you've got a rotating steering wheel, time circuits with all three dates which is great because the original only had two of them, you've got a gear shift, time circuit drive switch, and last but not least, the flux capacitor. I really love the way they made the capacitor this time around and the usage of the LEGO City grappling hook for the Y shape is clever. It doesn't end there though because there's a button in the back that activates a light up function for the flux capacitor. This wasn't something I considered LEGO doing for the set but it's such a great surprise and I love it. For a final touch, there's also the lightning rod hook that Doc uses in the first film to get Marty back to 1985. I did mention this set lets you choose which style of the DeLorean you want, so let's take a look at them. The second style of this car has the futuristic upgrades from Back to the Future Part 2, 
which means you have a Mr. Fusion barcode license plate and in a way you now have permission to switch the car into hover mode. Now if you chose to build the original DeLorean first like myself, you'll need to remove some parts to make the proper modifications. What I did after completing the original car was take the remaining parts and build what I could for the part 2 and 3 modifications to make switching styles more convenient. Mr. Fusion is a fairly accurate recreation that opens up to place the garbage inside and turn it into fuel. The banana and can are references to the objects Doc placed inside before taking Marty and his girlfriend Jennifer to the year 2015. Changing the license plate might seem a bit troublesome, but it's actually quite simple. I think the best way is to start by removing the cooling vents, the section that keeps the vents at an angle, and detach the license plate section from the mixel joints. You can easily pop out the 1985 plate with a brick separator and replace it with the new one, and then put it all back together. One last thing you can do is attach these 1x2 transclear bricks under the vehicle to make it look like it's levitating once converted into hover mode. Last but not least are the western modifications from Back to the Future Part 3. You simply just swap the tire rims, reverse the 1x4 modified bricks, and then attach the vacuum tube contraption to the front of the hood. Do keep in mind though that if you pre-built modifications like myself, you'll need to add a couple of parts to complete the contraption. To top things off, there's a display plaque with some info about the car and exclusive figures of Marty and Doc. For the first time ever, we get versions of these characters in their Back to the Future Part 2 attire and they look great. They both have some nice printed details and I especially love the side leg printing for Marty sneakers and the alternative head print with Doc's silver visors. In the end, the new LEGO DeLorean time machine is a beautiful model and as someone who wanted to see something like this for the longest, it's such a relief to know it finally exists. As a fan of the franchise and this iconic vehicle, I think this set ticks off a lot of boxes in my opinion. It's got nice scaling, handles smoothness of angles well, captures the intricate details needed, and has a fair bit of functionality you'd want from a vehicle like this. Not only that, but this thing will also make a great display piece whether it be on a shelf or table. I did expect them to give us slightly updated figures of Marty and Doc from the first film, so seeing part 2 versions instead was a wonderful surprise. If you're both a fan of Back to the Future and LEGO, then this just may be the perfect set. But of course, that's up to you. What are your thoughts on this set, and do you plan on picking it up when it releases? Be sure to let us know down in the comments below. Feel free to also let us know what other iconic vehicles from film and television you'd like to see LEGO bring to life. I've still got my eyes set on Kit from Knight Rider. As always, this is Kirk signing off, and I'll catch you all in the future, here on Beyond the Brick.